to the unfiltered side of YouTube, the home of unpopular opinions. So today we're going to touch a very touchy topic and that is abortions, as I'm sure you've already seen on the title. Um, if, you've been, uh, if you've been a subscriber for a long time of, or if you've watched a lot of my videos, I'm sure you can already preempt where I stand when it comes to abortions. Um, of course, I am pro-choice. I believe that a woman should be able to make the final decision as to whether or not she wants to keep or continue on with a pregnancy. And when I say a final decision, I don't mean that a man should not be involved. I feel that a man should definitely have a say in it, um, given his two cents, whether or not the abortion should go on. But the ultimate decision should be made by the woman. So personally, I've never gone through an abortion. In fact, I've never even had a pregnancy scare. I, I think I took my first pregnancy test this year when I went back to my gynae because I started bleeding from um, the operation that I had last year. So when I started bleeding, I went back to the doctor and they're like, yeah, when there's abnormal bleeding, it could be a pregnancy, so we need to do a test. And I was like, I really don't think I'm pregnant. And they're like, yeah, we just need to rule it out. Honestly, I didn't even know how it's done. I usually see it on TV, like how people do pregnancy tests, but I'd never really like go on like seriously step by step on how to do it. The nurse had to be like, okay, Ed, if you see one line, it's this, and if you see two lines, it's this. But anyways, it was negative. Like I said, I've always been very um, proactive when it comes to me not getting pregnant. So abortion in this country is still illegal, though we, we all know people still do it. I can bet you right now, you know someone who's done it, or you know of a friend who's done it, or you've heard of rumors of someone who's done it, and if you haven't, then you've probably done it yourself. So I'm not here to judge whoever has done an whoever has gone through an abortion. Like I said, I am pro-choice, and I feel like if it is your... 100% choice and you're not coerced by anyone. If this is your 100% choice and you're sure that you want to do it, then go ahead and do it. When I first joined um, uni at Daystar, I had a group of friends and we were all virgins when we came in. <laughs> we were all virgins when we, came, when we went through, uh, when we came in um, at Daystar. And within the first year, three of my friends had already gone through abortions. So Abortions are pretty common. I'm not saying that you go and do it. This, this is not what this video is about. All I'm saying is it's very common and I feel like for us to stop people from having abortions then the first thing that you need to do is actually educate them on how to not get, not get pregnant in the first place. For me, I don't believe in abstinence. I feel like this abstinence and chill thing has gone on for too long and it's clearly a campaign that is not working. What we can tell our young girls right now is about um, protection and about STIs and STDs not in a scary way but more of informing them of what's out there because you telling them not to have sex is clearly not working um, if we look at the number of abortions that are going on and the number of unwanted pregnancies or teenage pregnancies in this country so you telling them not to have sex is really it's a losing battle the other thing is about unsafe um, unsafe abortions and Personally, I know one girl who died, unfortunately, while procuring an illegal abortion. And these girls are going to these quack doctors because, again, abortion is illegal. And by the time that happens, by the time a woman decides to go and get an abortion, she's very scared. First of all, you're very young, you're very scared, you haven't told your parents, so you're literally just going to anyone who will procure an abortion for you and you do not know whether this person is legit, whether they're an actual doctor or not. And the worst part is, when, so during the service, um, the funeral service for this girl, they said that the girl died from um, a complication, like she had a stomachache and then she went to the doctor and then she died. And I understand that they're trying to keep the dignity of the deceased and they're also trying to keep their own respect as a family, I get that. But what if when things like this happen, like we, we come out and we speak about it so that more and more girls can see, hey, having an abortion can actually be dangerous. And also depending on where you're getting it, you can actually die. You can lose your life. Like how many people have, have died through abortions, but these stories are not being told. No one actually sees a real life example of someone who went through this and lost their life. I'm using this example because my sister got pregnant uh, the final year from four third time she got pregnant so of course she was very young to be getting pregnant um, and she was really scared about it but later on when we found out she was pregnant we accepted her and everything and I asked her like I had a, a conversation with her and I was like did you ever consider an abortion and she said never not for one second 
And I'm like, why? Why wasn't that in your mind? And she's like, she has already witnessed, and by then she was like, what, 1920? But she had already witnessed two of her classmates, two of them, go through illegal, an illegal abortion and die. So she was scared straight. When it comes to abortion, she was scared. She was like, I, I would rather my parents beat me to death, but I am not going for an abortion. And that's why I'm talking about um, having examples of negative things that can happen when you go through an abortion, especially an illegal abortion. Just because my sister saw what happened to her friend, like her two friends actually, like she witnessed it. She was her first, it was first account. Like she witnessed her friends dying. When the, the day she got pregnant, she decided there's no way, there's no way I'm going for an abortion. Whether it's a legal one, an illegal one, I am not going to, um, for, an abortion, for an abortion because of what I already saw. And that's what I'm talking about. Um, uh, let's, let's, let's start having real examples. Let's start talking about the repercussions of having abortions. And maybe, maybe just maybe, Maybe that will stop them from getting them. And uh, and the, the reason why I'm saying abstinence won't work, even when my sister saw what happened to her friends, like they died, well, they had sex, they got pregnant, they went for an abortion, they died. That still was not enough to stop her from having sex. And that's why I'm talking about, let's teach them about, um, about contraceptives and let's teach them about what sex really means. And when they do get pregnant and they decide not to keep it, let's also show them that they don't have to go to these quacks who go in with crude weapons and insert things in their vaginas in the name of giving them an abortion. Right now, I personally know of one girl who cannot have babies. She just cannot have babies because of an illegal abortion. So yes, the baby did come out. She did have the abortion. But later on in life, when she was ready to actually settle down and have a child, it was impossible for her. The other thing that you need to consider is also the emotional trauma. I know for some people, they have the abortion, they're out in the road, they're out clubbing, they go um, have sex with more guys, that's, up, that's, that's them. But there are people out there, real people out there who the, the emotional, the drain that it gets them is, is huge. It's very big. So one of my friends, like I said, three of my friends had abortions and one of them, um, uh, one of them, she, she didn't actually tell us about it until I think six or seven months later on. Actually, she didn't even tell the guy. The guy didn't also know. Like it was when she found out she was pregnant, it was like she went into a world of all, she was just all by herself. The fact that she had parents, she had sisters, she had us as friends, we share everything, but she could not bring herself to share the fact that she's pregnant and she's considering an abortion. So anyway, she went through the abortion and then after that she was very low. Like she was very, you can just see she's out of it. I could not really say depressed, but she was just, there was just something wrong with her. Until one day when we're just having a chat, just the group of us, and just she just broke down. She just started crying and we're like, what the heck, what's going on? And that's when she opened up and said, six months ago, she discovered she was pregnant, she went for an abortion and it's killing her. And the fact that she was speaking about this for the first time to anyone was like a, a huge load was coming off her shoulders and she could just cry and cry. And after that she was, I can say she, I can now say, now looking back actually, knowing what depression is, she was actually depressed come to think of it. She was depressed. She was, um, she didn't want to go to class. She didn't want to do anything. It's, she was sure, the thing is she was sure she wanted an abortion, but then after actually doing it, she started regretting. She started thinking, well, is this something that I want? Or, or did I make the right choice and all that? It took a very long time. She actually had to go for counseling, like professional counseling. So in the end, she went and told the parents and everything. Um, she was taken for counseling. It took a while for her to get over it. And she's lucky that she got the help that she needed. There are other people who get really depressed about, because they think they've murdered someone. They think maybe I'll never get pregnant again. They talk of seeing babies everywhere and thinking that baby's crying out for them and hearing voices and all that. And uh, uh, um, in the end, women are known to actually have committed suicide after that because they just cannot live with themselves so as much as we talk about abortion uh, as, a, as a very uh, as, a, as a matter of fact like I said I'm pro-choice as much but as much as I speak about it this way I also realize that there, there, there are emotional scars that it can leave you with so you have to be absolutely sure that this is what you want but then again for a woman to get to the doctor's office and be like I want an abortion it means that for most women I, I would think it would mean that they've really thought about this 
they probably talked to their partners as well they probably prayed about it you know like the, for for you to actually go to the doctor and say no i do not want this it's a lot of thinking and it's one of the biggest decisions that you're ever going to make as an adult as a 20 something year old as a as a teenager, uh, whatever age that you get pregnant at, I think even for a woman who's older, for a woman that's in her 40s, if she decides to have an abortion for whatever reason, it is still a very um, uh, emotionally draining process. So before you decide to have unprotected sex and get pregnant and now have to choose between having an abortion or not, put some things into perspective. But then if you do decide to still go ahead and have your abortion, let the decision be made not out of guilt from anyone. Don't be coerced by your boyfriend or your husband or your family or your friends. Let that decision be based solely on you. So you can definitely go seek advice from people. What I would advise is don't seek advice from, from your friends because you're, you're the same age, which means you're on the same level, which means you think the same. So they might not really have better insight as to what to do. I would say go to someone that you look up to. Say, most people would not dare go to their parents. So go to maybe an older friend or maybe if your friend has an older sister or an older brother that you think you can have this, this discussion with, then go and have a discussion with them. Or maybe an auntie that you consider a mom or maybe a pastor or a teacher or whoever it is that you feel like you're comfortable talking to. If not, and if you have the money, go seek professional help. You know, go to um, a, a counselor, a professional counselor who, who might give you the direction. And like I said, Said, they're not telling you what to do they're just giving you more light into this topic so that at the end of the day you make the decision and I know someone in the comments is gonna go like well what about the man he has a say yes I agree the man has a say but the ultimate decision still will lie with the woman why she's the one that's going to carry this baby for nine months she's the one who's going to be out of school and out of work for a number of months sometimes even for a whole year she's the one who's going to be set back so if the woman decides that you know what I am not ready right now like my friends we were in first year when they got pregnant and had abortions so they knew at first year um, if they get um, if they continue on with the pregnancy it will mean that they'll be set back a whole year and who knows what else their parents are gonna do to them so the decision should ultimately lie with the woman what I do not condone, however, as much as I am pro-choice, what I don't agree with, um, there was this show I was watching, uh, I think it was Switch TV, yeah, with, with Tamima, and there was this lady who was talking about she had abortions like nine times, and they, and they even commented on it, I'm like, as liberal as I am, I think sometimes you just... Um, abuse the system. You're basically taking advantage of the system. The fact that they've told you you can, it is legal to have an abortion and you can have it for up to three months. Doing it the first time, having an abortion the first time, yeah, it's a mistake. They happen. The second time, okay, cool. The third time, the fourth, the fifth, up to the ninth time, you're having an abortion nine times. It got to a place where the doctor actually said, I cannot give you more abortions because look at what you're doing at, um, uh, to your body. So when it comes to people who do it excessively then I get a bit as much as I feel like it's your body and you have a right to your body I feel like at some point it, it, it gets a bit too much. It gets a bit too much and that's what gives the people who are pro-life, it gives them a voice because they're like, you see, we give them a chance to have an abortion and now they're having 10, 20 abortions. There's no limit to this. So I feel like with everything, there should be a limit. As much as you're having an abortion because you're not ready to have a child, don't make it a habit. You, it happens the first time, the second time. The third time, get a condom, get uh, your tubes tied, get other things, like find ways of not getting pregnant again. If you sure that you do not want to have more babies so let me know in the comments what you think about um, abortion are you pro-life are you pro-choice um, and I know definitely um, judging from the comments that I got from my polyamory video people are gonna come into the comments and go like oh religion or oh, the Bible or oh, whatever so if we could just have a conversation without including the Bible or without including religion of any sort to the conversation, I think we'd move over first, um, faster because the people like me, for example, I am spiritual, I'm not religious, you know? So the moment you start bringing in things about what the Bible says or what the Quran says, you lose me. For example, for me, I'll be lost because I don't subscribe to that. So people should also understand not everybody subscribes to your religion, which is fine. We have so many 
many religions in this um, in this country and also in this world. So if you could just have a discussion, just base your discussion on facts and not things taken from the Bible, then we'd have a, a more constructive discussion. Thank you so much for watching the video. My name is Ebby. I make videos every Thursday and every Sunday at 7 p.m. Kenyan time. I will see you next week. Please remember to subscribe to the channel if you have not already so that you can become Sophia. And I will see you next week. Thank you for stopping by.